I forgot to tell this to you while recording the video, but I'm gonna be dropping a link to my model website in the description. Subscribe to it so that you guys receive the links to all of my newer models okay and there is also a link to this character editor place right here so an uncopyrighted version of this character editor place which allows you to edit it and take everything you want with that being said enjoy the video all right my friends so welcome to today's tutorial video yeah tutorial video and you guys might ask okay so why is he doing a tutorial video now he said that he doesn't want to do another one and um, if you have watched my welding tutorial video, then you know that I plan on creating some in the future. But I've done a community poll asking what type of videos you guys prefer, okay? So I've been doing those new kinds of videos for the past months now. I just wanted to see how you guys react to it. And, well, yeah, most of you seem to like the, like the old videos more. So the tutorial videos... And that's the reason why I'm gonna do both. So tutorials and the the style of videos I prefer, okay? And in today's tutorial video right here, after a long time, we're now gonna work on this character editor system. I haven't looked into it for months now, but I think that we wanted to create a data store system. Okay, and to do that, you wanna right click on a server script service and then add a script. And now we wanna import a bunch of stuff first of all. The data store service itself so game get service data store service this service is responsible for yeah all kinds of data store activities such as saving the data uh loading the data creating a data store in the first place you know so second thing we want to do is that we want to create our own data store so the ss stands for data store service the s our data store and then you want to uh, you want to perform a uh, get data store on this DSS value now nah, on this DSS variable right here and then you want to enter the name of your data store which is going to be <coughs> character editor test all right now the next thing we want to do is that we want to add some events right here okay and these events they are gonna Wait, let me write everything down and I'm going to continue explaining. So, as you guys know, in order to save data, load data, whatsoever, you need some occasion. So, you need to know when you want to do something. And for this purpose, we have created a bunch of events right here. So, three in total. The first two... Wow, wait, let me, let me put it this way. So, we have two occasions, okay? The first occasion is when a player joins. Because that's the time when we want to load the data. The second occasion is that when the player leaves and this will lead to the data of the player to being saved now we have three events you guys might ask okay why do we have three events when we only have two occasions so the, this first event right here play edit covers up the first occasion so when a player joins that's basically what happens right you gain players play edit play edit means the player has joined then we can get the player by adding this player as an argument right here now we can work with the player who has just joined. Now the second event right here, game player's player removing, is the exact opposite. Means when the player is being removed, means when the player leaves. Or is being kicked or whatsoever. Okay? And we can get the player who has been removed by adding the player in here as an argument as well. Okay? So this belongs to the first occasion, this belongs to the second occasion. So the player dis disappears and needs its data to be saved. Now, what is this about? Game bind to close. This is basically when the server is about to shut down so the server is about to close and we want to use this when we work in studio okay and we want to use this when we are actually in the game so in my experience play removing doesn't really work in studio for whatever reason but bind to close works perfectly fine in studio or oh, and um in the actual roblox game bind to close does not work while play removing works Okay, that's the reason why we are going to use them on different occasions as well. So if game, well, game get service run service is studio, then what this does is that it basically checks if the current session we are in is inside of studio. 
And as you guys know, we want to know when the current session is not in studio because that is the time when we are going to use player removing. Now, we want to do the same to bind to close with the difference that we want to know when the game is in studio. So if game gets service, run service is in studio, then we want to do all of the stuff we are about to do. <coughs> Wait. So the thing is that you guys know that we have the players we want to work with right here inside of those arguments. Now, the thing is that we don't have any here, and that is because this doesn't really return any player who has been removed or added because this only, you know, covers up when the server is about to shut down. So we need to find out a way on how to receive all of the remaining players inside in order to perform the safe operation on all of them. And that is how it works. So we are now looping through the players tab at that time when the spine to close is fired. Okay, so when the server is about to shut down. And then we want to, yeah, just apply the safe function all of those players right here. Now, all of these things might sound a little bit abstract to you because we haven't implemented, we haven't created the safe or the load function yet, but we are now going to do this. Um, yeah, let's start off with the loading one. And what we need is we we want to wait yeah we want to create a table right here called data store and then we want to create another table called default data and we want to give this a bunch of values so here for example what else can we give hair color and that is it for the beginning. We are only going to cover up these two things for the beginning. But later on, when we work on shirts, pants, accessories, did we? Did we? Nah, we, we did not implement accessories yet. So when we when we add more stuff, so when we progress more on the data store, we are going to expand this default data right here as well. But this is just for testing purposes as of now. So what this default data does is that it is going to so this is basically your default data so once you join a game for the first time this is going to be your data right here i just have to change uh, some things right here let's actually use hair one as the default here i don't know what hair one is and hair color black okay so those are the default settings for your data when you have joined for the first time so your hair is hair one your hair color is black although we haven't worked on hair colors yet but we're gonna do that soon yeah, what this does, so this empty table right here is going to contain all of the data of every player inside of here. Okay. So. Now, let's create the loading function. So, I'm not going to go ahead and write it down like this, okay? So, I'm not going to create a function. One. Nah. I'm not going to go ahead and create a function load. Because this loading function is only going to be used one time right yeah and that is the reason why i'm gonna just write this down once once and for all inside of here and then never again while this is gonna be called from multiple spots so from line 16 and 23 while the loading function is only, is only gonna be called in between these two parts right here that's the reason why i'm gonna write the loading function once and um the same function of course as well but not inside of a function, you know, so I hope that you guys understand why I'm not wrapping this inside of a function because we are only going to call it one time and that is when a player joins while the same function is going to be called two times, so when the players are removed or when bind to close happens but yeah, let's just move on local success error m p call function there we go if error m <clears throat> then error error m so i'm gonna be explaining this in a bit do not worry There we go. So this is our loading function. Okay, let me explain this to you. 
So the first thing right here is this local success RRM p call function. So as you can see, we have a, we have two variables right here up front. So success and RRM. And now we have p call. What, what is a p call? As you can see, p call function is a function itself, which contains all of this stuff. Now, what, what a p call does is that basically everything which is now written inside of this function, so this port, even when it runs into an error, it does not break the script or whatsoever. So you guys know that when your script runs into an error, it just refuses. It just stops to continue the rest of the script. And that is pretty crucial, especially when it comes to something so sensitive, such as the data store, because the data store is first of all, very important for storing your sets, you know, and when the script just stops handling all of the data store stuff, and maybe maybe stops to save your stats whatsoever then you have a huge problem because then your data might yeah might become corrupted and that is the reason why we have to ensure that everything works fine and does not break and that's the reason why we wrap this part which is the loading part instead of a p call because if this runs into an error then it will not break the whole script and you know just mess with your data mess with other people's data as well that's the reason why, why you wrap it inside of a p call. Now, a p call can either be successful, and successful means that it did not run into an error, or if it runs into an error, then it receives an error message. And that is basically what these two variables do. If this code right here is being run without without any errors whatsoever, then success is true. But if this code is run with any errors happening, then error m receives the error message and then I can just easily check if error m means if there is something stored inside of error message then i can error this error m inside of this output right here okay now let's get to this part right here so this loading stuff now what happens right here basically is that we have a uh, variable right here called get data so this is the data which has been received and we receive this by referring to the data store we have just created up here and then putting this call on get async so this is basically a function which gets us the data which is stored or now which gets us the value which is stored uh, uh, with this key right here now in order to understand what a key or, or how keys work you need to know how we are going to save our data okay so there is no point in me explaining how to load your data when we didn't talk about how we are going to save the data and i can only talk about this in depth once we are working on a safe function that is the reason why you need to be a little bit more patient so that i can explain to you how how uh, the keys work in terms of data stores and and so on okay now if there is any data which was stored in that key okay so just just know that the key is basically something unique which separates each user from each other, okay? In this case, it is our user ID. So the player's user ID. And if there is any data of that player, so if get data, then we wanna refer to this table right here. Then we wanna create a new index or overwrite a, a currently existing index. Now, the thing is that when the player has joined for the first time, then there is no such thing as, let me just, emphasize this so let's say a test act to get is a is a, um, a player inside of our server okay now what basically happens when this code is run is that it now overrides wait okay it now overrides this index which is this part right here with get data which is the data which has been loaded okay so it basically overrides this value with something else whatever get data is now in our case when a player has joined for the first time inside of that server which is which is the, the the usual case then there is no entry okay then the entry is being created but just for the case if there is entry then the entry is going to be overwritten but there there is there is no case there's no case that that an index of the player who has just joined already exists there is no case and if there is there if there's such a case then it is an error 100 percently okay so 
Um, yeah, we are creating a new index with that data right here. As you guys know, this table stores all of the players' data in that server. So not only our players, but also of other players within that server. Else refers to the case, so to the opposite case of this one, okay, which is basically that there is no data, no loaded data. Then we want to create a new index and we want to put default data as the data of our player instead of that index. Okay, that is basically how the loading function works. And I would like to finish off this data store within the next tutorial episode, guys, which is gonna be uploaded in the next days. I don't know when exactly, but yeah, expected. And that being said, see ya.